Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Saint-Jean d'Angely. It's round seven of the FIA Motocross World Championship, and we are live on Saturday for the MX2 qualifying race here. The MXGP of France is the final stop of our three in a row. We were in Lombardia at Mantua, Agada, Portugal a week ago. And here at Saint-Jean, the championship fight will continue with the main races tomorrow. But before we go there, we just have the small matter of MX2 qualifying to take care of. As you can see, the riders are on their sighting lap at the moment. They'll go back into the waiting zone. 20 degrees outside. Although it is a little bit windy, the storm clouds have dispersed a little bit. Um, but we're about an hour and a half north of uh, Bordeaux on the west coast of uh, France, about four and a half hours south of Paris, the capital. And this uh, racetrack, all 1,620 metres of it, is hard, it's slick, the rock is coming back through, but we've got some nice dirt in some places as well, some nice lines. And so uh, from that side of things, uh, there is a bit of traction, but the roost is going to hurt for sure if you get caught behind the uh, riders here today. Well, you can see the fans are uh, ready to witness the, the, uh, the big boys here, MX2, and then followed by MXGP a few moments later. But uh, a few moments ago, Lisa Lennon was down on the grid. She caught up with a couple of riders, both of them French. One of them was the 225 of Brian Moreau, uh, riding for Bud Racing Kawasaki. But before that, the Red Bull KTM of Tom Vial, who currently sits fifth in the championship. And he's already had a couple of podiums so far this year. I'm just on the start of the first qualifying race of the day, the MX2 guys. Now, I'd like to speak to our MX2 rookie, French rider Tom Vial. Uh, Tom, this is your very first home GP, isn't it? Uh, what sort of emotions are you feeling right now? Are you nervous or excited? Yeah, much people, it's, it's calm and much funny in France. And yes, I'm excited, but I'm focused on, on my race. No, no mistake is very important for, for, for tomorrow. And uh, the race is tomorrow and good qualification is important. Well, you were sixth in time practice. This kind of track, hard pack, something you're used to. Good track for you? Yes, the track is very good and feeling very good uh, on the track and on my back. And yeah, I'm happy for, for a good weekend. Have a good home GP. Thank you. Thank you. Now, being a French GP, obviously I want to speak to a French rider, but I also want to speak to Brian Moreau because you were fastest in free practice, you were second in time practice. This is a track that you know very well, doesn't it? Isn't it? So tell us, how was it out there for you? Yeah, I felt good uh, this morning uh, while we were riding. I mean, uh, free practice and practice. Uh, I made a mistake in my best lap, but I, I was really comfy. I mean. Uh, I know perfectly that track, and then I know I can do something good. But uh, yeah, the start now is the, the most important thing, you know, to be in the front. So I, I look forward like to, to race and then really happy. But you were telling me the other day, I mean, it's a home GP for you, but you're also very local to here. I know you used to practice here after school as well. Yeah, really, yeah. I live really near to here, and then uh, it's like it's like my home. I've been riding a lot on, the, on that track, so really happy and then with the, all those fans it's really touched me really deep so that... have a great race thanks brian good luck to the guys here it's time for the first qualifying race mx2 <laughs> Here's how the riders line up for the MX2 qualifying race based on their time practice a short while ago. Jorge Prado on the Red Bull KTM was half a second quicker than Brian Moreau on the Bud Racing Kawasaki. Those times are 148.965 and a 49.507. Mitch Evans on the podium last week for Honda 114 Motorsports, French based team. He was third. Maxim Renault fourth for uh, Yamaha SM Action MC Migliori, so a Frenchman there. Ben Watson for Monster Energy Khmer, Yamaha was fifth, head of Tom Vial. Uh, Henry Jacoby, F and racing team Kawasaki um, him and Watson actually had a bit of a, a come to uh, towards the uh, end of that session just at the end of the start straight here I'm not sure exactly what happened before but going up the hill Watson I uh, it looked to me like he just kept his own line around uh, the right hand side but Jacoby took a bit of a beeline for him and almost carved him up deliberately and continued through the wave section at the top of the hill but uh, anyway obviously 
the German felt that he was maybe balked or something happened somewhere on the lap as he was on a fast lap. But anyway, hopefully those two uh, won't get into any grappling uh, situation during the race today. Uh, Tom Vial goes to line six, Hendrik Kobe seven, uh, Thomas Kjerrelsen eight for Rockstar Energy Hasfana, Yago Kietz nine, and Matej Borame ten for Honda Red Motor, Asimota, David Puchis eleven, Mikaeli Chervelin, Darian Sinai, Oman Oslin, Adam Sterry, Michael Sandler, you saw the list anyway, Dunham Walsh, Brent Van Donick, uh, Bas Farsen, and Jed Beaton. Andreas and Notti didn't start, nor too did Alexander Brown. Brown, who was in as a, uh, a replacement for the injured Conrad Muse for Hitachi KTM fueled by Milwaukee, he fell in practice this morning and has uh, either did his dislocate the shoulder or got some kind of shoulder internal damage, a rotator cuff or something like that. So he won't be lining up, nor too will Andreas and Notti, the Marchetti Racing Team KTM rider. Uh, he crashed hard uh, in the uh, free practice and uh, he just after the finish line jump, the tabletop to the right, and then the uh, the uphill triple. Something happened to him coming out of the turn and on the run up to the thing, but he was uh, just positioned on the top of the hill. Looked like he'd rang his bell and was out, but uh, not sure what uh, the latest prognosis is on that. But uh, as soon as we get it, of course, we will. Uh, it took a while to get him shifted. There were wave jellos through there for uh, quite a while. The medical uh, team doing everything they can to ensure like a uh, safe and swift uh, evacuation, but he was down for some time. But uh, anyway, Mr. Ingo Parch making his way up the centre of the start straight, getting ready with that big green flag of his. There's Van Donick, Walsh, centre of your screen, Bas Farson to the left. Uh, Stephen Sword helping him out this weekend. Of course, uh, normally he should be working with Conrad Muse, but uh, no Muse in that Hitachi team, so uh, he's uh, shifted his attentions this weekend to uh, Bas Farson. There's Jorge Prado on pole then for this, uh, call it provisional pole, for this uh, time, this qualifying race. Brian Moreau, stunning time from him, but as you say, grew up not far from here, has done more than his fair share of laps from here. How cool would it be to see the former 125 European champion just pull off a qualifying race win here at the very least? That'd be a shock upset, wouldn't it? Fastest in free practice, second fastest in time practice. Henry Jacoby. FNH Racing Team. Looks calm at the moment, but you know as soon as the gate drops, the guy is going to uh, get uh, pretty fired up. Tom Vial, his first home Grand Prix. As he was riding uh, European 250 Championship last year. He was a Red Bull KTM rider. So he's lined up in between Olsen and Evans, the 19 and the 43. Here is Olsen. Championship leader up until a week ago. Prado took over the, uh, the plate. And he's three points clear. Evans looked good in practice this morning in time training. And uh, his time will reflect that. So 800 slower than uh, Brian Moreau. Good to see Maxime Renault, another French rider in there as well, the 959. But uh, the 919 of Ben Watson, the Montreal Chikamea Yamaha, lined up fifth. You get a good start, this kid. There is Renault. Yamaha is in action, MC Migliori. Started to come good for him last weekend. In Portugal, two ninth place finishes, good solid performance from him. Matthijs Boirame and Adam Steri flank the 61 of uh, Prado. Prado is... Uh, just to the left of the podium as we look at it, just on the corner of the uh, the left corner of the KTM and Monster Banner there. So we know what his starting prowess is like. So he's uh, good 10, 12 gates over. Maybe 15 gates over from the left hand side. But the fly race and 15 second board goes up. 20 minutes plus two laps. The duration of this MX2 qualifying race. Who will it be that uh, grabs that uh, all-important hole shot here? Because you're going to need it. From about gate 15, it is Jorge Prado. But up the inside is the 29 of Jacoby. And uh, Farson gets stood up, and so too did the uh, 253 of Panzer. There's the uh, 51 there. Adrian Malaval just getting stalled at the back, but it's uh, Prado who leads. Yago Kitz in second. 
Michaeli Cherblin looks like he's in third. Well, was in third, but uh, Jacoby finding his way through. Evans in fifth position on the Honda over on the right hand side, jumping up into fourth place now behind the Kawasaki. Mavro and the most like slick stones at the top of the hill. As they rally that turn, there's Moreau on the line as well. So Moreau in eighth place, just behind uh, Tom Vial. So it's Prado, Kitts, Jacoby, Chervlin, Evans, Sterry, Vial, Moreau, Dylan Walsh, nine, Loris Breeding is in tenth place. Don't normally see that name up there, the 331 uh, from uh, Switzerland on the ST Racing, STC Racing, by Access Yamaha. Stalling and bobbling at the top of the hill, always a uh, bottleneck on the opening lap of the race. Stormy clouds looming in over on the uh, horizon there to the north. But Evans still under attack in fourth position from Chervelin. But it's uh, Prado who leads. Yago Kitz on the blue machine, well, blue clothing, black Yamaha in second. There's Watson just behind uh, Friedix. Sanai, have we lost Sanai? He was in 12th at the split. So uh, here is Prado, your race leader. There is uh, Yago Kietz in second. Jacoby just behind him in third place. Different lines at the bottom of the hill. Fourth is Mitch Evans for Honda. Fifth is Michaeli Chervelin on the Yamaha. Sixth is Tom Vial. Seven, Brian Moreau. Eight, Adam Sterry. Nine is Dylan Walsh. Ten is Loris Friedix. Eleven is Alvin Osland. I think it's Ben Watson now, actually. Twelve is uh, Mitchell Harrison, so the uh, American on the Bud Racing Kawasaki. He's done some, uh, it's probably one of the only tracks he knows, actually. Joined the circus uh, at Trentino, round four of the championship before he had that four or five week break. He's based uh, sort of coastal at Hossegore with the team, Bud Racing. So uh, he had a good qualifying in his first attempt. Did the American rider. Fifth at uh, Trentino that day. But Prado, already almost two seconds clear, top of the hill of the Yamaha and the Kawasaki of Kiertz. And Jacoby, Evans not too far behind either. Chervlin, Vial at six, Walsh seven, Watson eight, Moreau down to nine, Sterry ten, Friedig eleven, Harrison twelve, Alvin Osman thirteen, Thomas Olsen fourteen for the Dane. Fifteen. Is, uh, in fact, he's 15th now because Maxim Renault has just passed him. Bas Farson is 16, Zach Pichon is 17. Kai Rowley looking on from uh, pit lane. As Prado, his young MX2 teammate, leads the way here in the early stages of MX2 quali. Gustavo Pessoa for uh, Bike at DRT, Kawasaki, is an 18th, the Brazilian. David Porchi is 19, and Jan Pancha is in 20. So the 253 who got held up through the first turn has recovered well, so maybe went around the outside of everybody at turn two, but he's uh, forced his way into uh, a top 20 position here. Good for the, uh, the 253 on the KTM. Uh, on the Yamaha, sorry, for uh, Yamaha Delta. Boards going out to everybody. Michael Senna just outside of the top 20, so too. Borame and Van Donick, Enzo Toriani, Kim Savasti. Uh, he is, uh, I've seen him in a while actually, Kim Savasti. So uh, great to have him back on track. Number 485. Coming towards the end of lap two. Prado set the fastest lap last time around at 53. But now it's a 52-7. But here it goes quicker immediately by two tenths. And that gap is only one and a half seconds between the Spaniard and the Belgian. Two very hot prospects in MX2. Jacoby just hanging on to their coattails at the moment. Coming into view now on that Cowie. As Hitz launches downhill. Short, sharp descents and ascents. There's Watson looking to go around the outside of Sterry. Derry to the outside for the great 11. Watson sitting down as late as possible on that inside rut. Goes to smooth the route around the outside as well, but doesn't gain, gain any time there because that's a very difficult corner to get right there at the top of that left-hander. So Watson here in 10th. The guy ahead of him on the second of those Kawasaki's is uh, Sterry in ninth place. Brian Moreau, 225. 
in his uh, limited edition seven racing shirt and kit. Managing to just about keep that front end down, but Watson will find his way up the inside of Sterry. So the Yamaha now up into ninth place. Going after the young French kid, the 225 here. Still a watch, Revo Hasvana. Just ahead of them, always a good starter. But, dude, has he been in the wars a bit recently? Get this one out of the way, recover in the next week or so, and then it's off to Russia. But qualifying is always a slightly different story, isn't it, to, to racing? Best qualifying this year for Walsh has been 11. Matthew Basin, but it's been a bit wayward since then. And Falcons Ward, he uh, got landed on, didn't he? First lap, he crashed in front of uh, Sterry, I think it was. Through the waves before you head up the first hill at Falcons Ward. Jacoby now the fastest rider on track at 52 0 7 4. Four tenths quicker than the guy is closing down here at the bottom of the hill. Yago Kitts, two tenths quicker than your race leader, Jorge Prado. So these three separated by just over three seconds. Oh, I'll tell you what, if that rain, if that cloud does kind of, it's not given rain today, funnily enough, but those, rain, those clouds do look a little bit dark and moody. Place will be a slip track for uh, a little while. Anxious looks on the faces of the guys. Uh, have we lost Loris Friedig or is he uh, running into some kind of uh, glitches? He was 14th, showing down in 31st at the moment. We'll get that rectified as he comes over the line next time around. But race 57 of Sinai. Sinai was inside the top 15 or so and he's now down in 27 after an earlier mistake on the opening lap. Jorge Prado, looking very good. Great performance as well for uh, the Sandman here. 193 of uh, Yago Kiers. Jacoby, no stranger to riding hard slick surfaces, of course, being uh, from Germany, but now that he's shacked up with the whole FNH racing squad based in Holland, probably does more sand riding now than he does hard pack. But these three now separated by just over four seconds. 52-2, 52-3, and a 53-1. Prado here to Jacoby. So the German just losing a little bit of ground as these guys here: Cherblin, Moreau, Walsh, Watson, and Sterry. Battle over, uh, well, you've got Fial at the top of the hill. There's Brian Moreau. He's in seventh position, 225. Seventh in qualifying in Portugal a week ago. Currently seventh here, but probably hoping for a little bit more. Look how loose it is up there. Chase the dirt around the outside, just like Watson did, but... Is it any quicker now that the, the track is drying out and those stones are starting to roll underneath the rubber? Under the Nobles. He's got a good run on Walsh here, though. Tries to get up the inside of the Kiwi. Oh. And uh, Walsh just takes a, an anxious look back to see who it is that's closing him down. They've got a bit of a gap back to Sterry here. On the 811, uh, FNH Kawasaki. But Maxim Renault and Thomas Olsen are right there in the wings as well. Mitchell Harrison is still in 13th position. David Porch is now up in the fourth for Team Diga Pro Cross. 15th is Vassal for Itachi KTM UK, fueled by Milwaukee. Osland is next in 16th place. The second of the Revo Huskies. Teammate to Walsh here. Lead rider in this shot now. We've got for our mate, Pichon, Pessoa, and Pancha. Ah, oh. Olsen showing all kinds of fight. Leaning on Maxime Renault. And uh, forces the Frenchman high and wide into the final corner. 
So a poor start, but he's having to fight through traffic again. Thomas Olsen is now up into that 11th place. Start straight fairly even here, though. You can be anywhere. Well, I said, if you go to the line 11, Prado went to the line first and chose 15 or thereabouts from the inside. Michael Sandler with a bit of tape wrapped around the rear wheel. Looks like he may have had a collision with a tough block because it's the only kind of uh, similar material. Hard move down the outside though, Olsen looking to maintain that momentum, the power of that Husky. Pulls him around the outside, goes around the outside of Sterry who uh, doubles his way in. Both riders jumping long, we've got a tight right hander at the end of the straight here, Sterry's not going to yield here is he? No way, but Olsen read it well, he cut to the inside and left Sterry with nowhere to go. All of a sudden two positions in the space of a lap for Olsen as uh, Watson finds his way past Walsh. So Watson now up into eighth place. Olsen, tenth. Sterry just a little bit further back in 12th, Renault in 13th. Olsen goes around the outside of Walsh this time. He knows the uh, former championship leader is there. He'll be brave to close down the gap. Gets run wide again. Likes that bit of racetrack, doesn't he? The 19. Bit, heavy, bit of a heavy landing there. Meanwhile, Jorge Prado is fastest man on track, fastest lap of the race on lap six, a 51.7. Olsen is doing 53s in traffic. Prado now has a two and a half or 2.2 second advantage over Iago Gitz. Three points. Well. 5.2, so exactly three seconds gets to Jacoby. There he is. The rider just set the fastest lap. Jorge Prado, Red Bull KTM. Mitch Evans is in fourth. Uh, Prado's teammate here. Uh, Tom Bial is in fifth place. Chervelin is in sixth position. Seven with Brian Moreau. Watson eight, Olsen nine, Walsh ten, Sterry 11, Maxim Renault 12. Uh, Harrison, Mitchell Harrison, the American been demoted to 14th place now because Pooches of the Netherlands has come through. Just riding to a slightly different level to everybody at the moment. Jorge Prado getting on the gas earlier, braking later, gear changes, but all of a sudden, look at this here. Watson has been caught by Olsen, and Olsen's going to charge down the inside in the first turn. Talk about a hard race through the field for Olsen. Didn't make a great start, but he's just been in attack mode. He's arrived, made the pass, disappeared. But as we saw in previous uh, rounds, where Olsen, even in Portugal, and Lombardia. Argentina and Matali, obviously, the difference there because he went 1-1 in the race, but the other three uh, occasions where he's won the qualifying race, hasn't been able to turn it into uh, overall Grand Prix wins, apart from that one at Matali Basin. Still need a good start tomorrow give yourself more than half a chance. Here's Renault. Oh, big mistake there. Oh! Very, very lucky there, Dylan Walsh. I'll tell you what, he's going to take a load of skin off his hand and his elbow. But he messed up coming out of the corner, but as he got back on track, uh, Renault, from nowhere, just landed into the side of him, and Walsh is lucky only for the fact that he slid his way down the hill from top to bottom instead of it biting and gripping and sending him cartwheeling. Watch this here, he was out of shape there, and uh, wow. Wow. A passenger. Dylan Walsh cannot get a break at the moment.
Yargo Gibbs closing in on uh, Prado. Was 1.9. Might only be ever so slight, but with four and a half minutes to go, the Belgian may have just uh, closed the gap here and given himself a little bit of self-belief. It is 1.5, so not much, but visible. So here's Olsen. What kind of races he had so far in this MX2 qualifier? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Olsen on Renault. Had to be aggressive. Then on Walsh, same corner. And then end of the start straight on Ben Watson. That put him up into eighth place just a moment ago. And is he still pushing on? Uh, 53.9, that time around, a 54.6 for Prado. Olsen all of a sudden on the rear of uh, Brian Moreau here, who's just demolished a tough block. For, feed the horses for that later. So Prado leads, second and a half clear of Yago Kiet. Three seconds back is Henry Jacobi in third, Mitch Evans is fourth, he'll be pleased with that. Tom Vial fifth, Chervil in sixth, Brian Moreau here in 225 and the Kawasaki is seventh. The guy closing down, Husqvarna on the left, number 19 is Thomas Olsen, having to work extremely hard in this qualifying race. Nice line here, we used it uh, earlier on Adam Sterry. Brian Moreau doing his best to try and contain the Dane. But Olsen having none of it. Two different lines there. Quick look at the pit board as he heads past pit lane. He is just riding like he's on rails at the moment, Olsen. All of a sudden, he's now up into seventh position. Definitely got his line styled for tomorrow, hasn't he, in terms of... Of, uh, they go inside, he goes outside, he makes the pass stick. They go uh, outside, he goes inside, he makes the pass stick. Great performance from him. Now on the back of Chervelin. This is 4 6 place. So the Italian is going to get caught napping here in a moment, but how battered and bruised he is after his uh, escapades last week in Portugal. by this time, follows when he needs to. He's got one or two lines, hasn't he, on track. He'll go uh, over this tabletop here, top end of the circuit, but bottom of the hill, he'll go wide, keep that momentum going. He'll try and work the magic around the outside, but he'll probably wait for Chervelin to commit, who commits to the same line, actually. So, top of the hill, he'll be... Uh, to the left side any moment now through the waves. Will he stay even further left? Down the straight here and cut back to the inside of Chervelin. That line is working, but again, is he going to get better drive coming out of here? He's got to be aggressive. Got to make it work. Oh. End of the start straight then. The same way that he did Watson. Chervelin knows he's there though. This time, the Yamaha SM Action MC Miliuri rider outdrags the factory Husky. And for the first time in this race, Olsen... Oh, I was about to say, he's had to wait more than a lap to make a pass stick, but he picks up another rider in the space of a lap. This time, it's Chervelin. Welcome to the top six, TKO. But Vial has already through the next wave after the... Uh, the two finish line, the, the finish line jump here in the next tabletop. So that gap is, uh, where is it? Nine seconds. And we've only uh, three laps to go. So it looks like Olsen is only going to climb as high as six, but with this battle here, a second between Prado and Kiertz. Probably more impressed with the uh, Belgians' ride here on the hard pack than the uh, Spaniards, to be honest because no one would have expected this.
but it's one thing finding Ray onto the rear wheel of Prado, another one to uh, maybe try and pass him. But Red Bull KTM needs Monster Energy, come here, Yamaha. Wave Jellos round the corner, man down. 282 of uh, Campus Carla, Sweden. Nervous look to the right as Prado heads down past pit lane. He can sense Yago Kips there, but just getting out of that turn, that first corner a bit earlier and uh, setting himself up for turn two. Just does, it's just, it makes a difference actually because Yago Kips went a little bit longer, made that corner wider, and then he's got to cut back to the other side of the track to uh, try and open himself up. But 1060 was the, uh, the gap at the end of lap 10. We're on lap 11 now, and uh, the two lap board goes out. Gap goes out just a little bit, does it? Let's have a look. Yeah, 1875. So probably lost about eight tenths through the first two corners that time around. Did Yarko hit? Watson and Moreau. So Moreau in eighth, Watson nine. This is the final corner. So Watson in ninth place, 28 and a half seconds off the lead. He's lost about six seconds since uh, Olsen found his way through, but he's notched his way neatly up the inside of Moreau this time. So Watson now up into uh, eighth place. Chairman just around the corner, quite literally. On the side of the crest. Watch this. Got good drive. He jumps long instead of trying to uh, double smoothly. He ran it up the inside, gave Moreau no other option but to take a wider line. Already breaking free from the French teenager. Right, uh, Thomas Gerolson sets the fastest first sector on this particular lap. Seven tenths quicker than this guy here, your race leader. Prado and Kiertz, almost identical sector one. Lost about eight tenths sector two, did Kiertz. And he's lost uh, about another half sector three, so the gap's going to be about a second and a half, two seconds this time around. Two and a half seconds, maybe, yeah, 2.8. Been a lonely ride for Henry Jacoby. Tried to hang on to the KTM and the Yamaha ahead of him, but the FNH Racing Kawasaki rider, number 29, well, he won't be too fussed about the good pick for tomorrow, psychologically good. You look at the split times, he'll analyze all the, uh, the splits from every lap. See where he's good. Probably go over that detail with Mark Deruva. See where he can fine tune ahead of tomorrow's main races. Here's Prado. See that gap just in the space of a lap gone out from 1.8 to 2.8 seconds. So the Red Bull KTM rider comes into land. Led every single one of these 12 laps and uh, he'll cross the line 13 laps. It'll be Prado's third qualifying race win out of the six that he would have contested so far. Heads uphill, turn two. Use the dirt just to uh, propel him from turn two to turn three. Drops neatly downhill. Jorge Prado exits the final turn here, and the Red Bull KTM rider will cross the line. He'll take the third qualifying race win of the year. Yago Kiertz comes home second for the second time this year, and uh, we wait for Henry Jacobi. He's going to be third for the German for FNH Kawasaki.
Mitch Evans not too far behind in fourth position for the second time in succession, third time this year. And then fifth, Tom Vial. We'll be pleased with that, his home round, just to get that out of the way. Sixth, though, was Olsen. Seventh, Chervelin. Eighth, Watson. Ninth, Moreau. Ten, Maxime Renault. Making their way back to the uh, winner's circle, but today we will only speak to Jorge Prado. Three seconds in the end, he was victorious by over Jago Kietz. But the Belgian did look to close in two laps from the end, but uh, maybe Prado just turned it on a little bit just to uh, make sure that he was not challenged on the final lap or so. One or two riders still making their way towards the end of their final lap here. I'll give you the full rundown in just a moment. Of course, we'll show you some um, uh, some highlights as well in the not too distant future. Anyway, here's uh, Jorge Prado. Jorge Prado, another great start, another perfect race. Perhaps uh, Yago hits didn't really let you get away, but you kind of uh, put in the pace at the end there. Yeah, it was a good motor. Got a whole shot. That was uh, the goal for today as well. You know, get a good start, get out of all the travel and. And, you know, it went like planet, so perfect for tomorrow. First, feeling good. Uh, Yago was there all motto, but uh, anyway, I was feeling good tomorrow. I will do a bit extra, and uh, hopefully we can get the overall. Good luck for the race. Not even a speck of dirt on that red number plate. Jorge Prado arrives here round seven as a new championship leader. Walks away with his third qualifying race win of the season. Hasn't finished lower than fourth, actually, in the qualifying races this year. That was in uh, Lombardia, where he didn't make a great start. So, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But for now, he'll enjoy winning the qualifying race here in France. Take a quick look then, the official confirmation. MX2 qualifying, it was a win for Jorge Prado. Yago Kietz was second, Henry Jacoby third, Mitch Evans of Australia was fourth, Tom Bial fifth, Tom Olsen sixth, uh, Michele Cherblin seven, Ben Watson, Brian Moreau, and Maxime Renault rounding out the top ten. Then it was Adam Sterry, David Puchis, Bas Barson in 13th, Mitchell Harrison 14, uh, Brent Van Donick 15, Alvin Osland 16, Matthijs Boromé, Darian Sanai got back to 18th in the end, uh, Jan Panzer and Enzo Torriani. One or two little casualties during the way, but uh, let's take a quick look then at NX2 qualifying. Went a little bit like this. The gate dropped, and uh, from about the center of the gate, it was uh, Jorge Prado. Yago Gears was right there with him, so too the 29 of uh, Jacoby. Chervelin was in there as well. So too, Adam Sterry up the inside at the top of the hill. Evanso came out fourth, fifth. Then he was quickly in the fourth place. Watson made a move on Sterry whilst he was uh, trying to find his way into uh, the top ten. Jacoby was in third, never really letting these guys get away from him. Olsen, though, made a poor start. He had to run his way past Maxime Renault, Adam Sterry. Dylan Walsh just got ran wide there by Ben Watson. And then by the hard charge in Olsen. That was for about eighth place. Well, maybe this was for eighth, actually, because uh, he forced his way down the inside of Watson here in the first turn and kept on climbing. Well, a scare of the day, big moment of the day, when uh, Maxim Renault launched into the side of Dylan Walsh, the Kiwi, not picking himself up. Olsen around the outside of Moreau up the inside of Chervelin. And that would put Olsen in sixth place. Ben Watson had to get aggressive on uh, Brian Moreau at the top of the hill. That put the Brit into eighth. Moreau, Moreau came over night ahead of Maxim Renault, but for uh, the third time this year, it was a win by three seconds by Jorge Prado. He hit second, Jacoby was third.
So, uh, best moments coming up. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. And when we return, it will be for MXGP qualifying at 5.30. So, uh, four and a half minutes time. See you then.